Well, thank you. Great. <laughs> All right. Um, so my name's Sasha Lawrence. I'm 25, and I currently work for a big four professional services firm in Sydney. Did an arts degree at Melbourne Uni, which um, was a lot of fun, but that was basically it. I did a wine tasting subject and majored in some feminist subjects. Always wanted to study law, so decided to um, do it as a, as a JD and actually spent a couple of years doing arts thinking about whether I actually wanted to study law. At Melbourne Uni gave us access to law subjects, so I got to dabble with it and it kind of just confirmed that I wanted to study law. One of the reasons why I moved up to Sydney was I got into law school but I also got offered a role uh, at a not-for-profit um, straight after I graduated from um, Melbourne Uni and I, I kind of thought it was a great opportunity to move to a new city, work with an organisation that I already knew and uh, it, was an, it was an opportunity to develop a business acumen and start to develop other skills. I thought I would have uh, you know, done the role for a year and then gone back to studying. I ended up working full time and um, studied part time for about three and a half to four years with a couple of fails in there. <laughs> but uh, you know, we all make choices yeah. and I chose to focus on work yeah. because of uh, I guess the development I was getting from the not for profit. Yeah. Look, it was really hard because I, um, I did not like reading legislation and I uh, didn't like studying at law school. So whilst I was really passionate and interested in law, I, I, I hated studying and it just wasn't playing to my strengths. So I think initially it was really easy for me to prioritise work over studying. But what ended up happening was I failed quite a few subjects and got to a point where um, I realised that my career prospects were going to be quite slim yeah. if I wanted to go to a law firm or to a big um, professional services firm. There was a turning point where um, I, I did an internship at a professional services firm and kind of, uh, um, I guess, gave me a kick up my butt that I needed to start studying and get through the, the course. And so um, kind of at that point knew that law was not going to be my uh, career. And that mainly came from a place of, yes, I'm absolutely passionate about it, but it doesn't play to my strengths in any way whatsoever. Uh, but the big four firm that I had interned at, th there were so many opportunities for me to work in different parts of the business where I could uh, build on my own skills, but also my experience working at the not-for-profit. I was actually presenting at a conference, so it was through the not-for-profit where I was presenting at a conference and uh, a recruiter kind of came up to me and said you should um, apply for our internship program. And I did, but to be honest, it was a really difficult process because I, I had a couple of fails in my transcript. So the partner and director who interviewed me absolutely skinned me for that and really in made the, it... In the interview? Yeah, in the interview and, um, you know, made it very clear that having four fails in your transcript is just not okay. Yeah. So on one hand, I mean, you know, that, that absolutely gave me a kick up my butt. Uh, but, but I then had to really draw upon my experience outside of university uh, to, I guess, substantiate why I would be a, a great candidate for the program. And, and I guess for me it was, um, I, I didn't fail those subjects because I was sitting at home twiddling my thumbs. I just didn't prioritise my time uh, and where I was investing my energy. So, uh, you know, that interview was pretty gruelling, but, uh, you know, they, they kind of saw value in my experience and my other strengths and gave me a go um, to come in and intern. It was really looking at the skills I developed working for the not-for-profit, specifically around relationship building. So in professional services, we are a people business at yep. the end of the day, and you can be technically brilliant, but the world is changing and that's no longer enough. You need to be able to have a conversation that's meaningful and connect with your clients. And so uh, being able to draw upon my experience of building relationships uh, was key. Uh, and the other part of it was, I think, 
where corporate Australia or the world is at the moment is at a really exciting time of change where um, businesses are looking at bringing in people who think differently, have different experiences to drive innovation and change. And so knowing that that was what was happening in the industry really allowed me to um, hone in on a couple of key projects that I'd worked on previously and experiences where I could demonstrate that it would add value to the firm. So the most challenging part of the interview was uh, in, in the assessment centre there was a, a technical piece of work and I um, sat in that room and I looked at that paper and I might as well have walked out of the building and genuinely um, believed that I would not have received a phone call from uh, the partners. So the, the intern was for uh, a, like a, a program in our corporate tax team within Tax and Legal and so it was a pretty <laughs> challenging tax assessment okay. and I had never studied tax I'd, um, and, and to be honest yeah. I didn't prepare for the assessment centre so uh, part of it was I really prepared for the interview because I knew that that was where I, I, I could wow yeah, yeah. but I, I didn't necessarily put any time into preparing for the assessment piece of it which in hindsight absolutely regret because if I blew my interview there would have been nothing else for them to fall back on I mean and don't be wrong like with the with the interview what was challenging about that was um, someone who essentially almost has your future in their hands yeah. calling you out on not performing very well at university and that's an absolute ego blow but at the same time it's also quite confronting to sit in a room and go wow in 45 minutes you could more or less decide which path I'm going to be yeah, taking yeah. Um, from here. That's really uh, interesting isn't it? Yeah, yeah so that was quite daunting yeah. in there. They kind of sat me down and uh, had that conversation with me about what, what I actually wanted to do and what I was passionate about. And it was really clear that corporate tax was not what I was passionate about and neither was, was practicing law. And so the firm were just amazing at um, connecting me with other parts of the business uh, to see where I could actually just bring what was great about myself and my experiences to a new role. So for a couple of months after I left, it was a lot of coffee catch ups, uh, phone calls, emails, till eventually uh, found a role that um, w was really suited to me. And it's been, uh, it, it's been so great kind of starting in a firm where the role was just so wrong for me. But with the business being open and myself being open to uh, you know, new roles that I didn't think of previously, um, I found myself in a position where I, I come to work and I just bring the best to myself. Well, I, I can bring the best of myself and uh, I know it's going to add value to what I'm doing. There, there wasn't so much of a testing process after because I'd kind of done, done that. The, the interview process was, was challenging in the sense that people looked at my CV where I had not -for -profit, a not-for-profit background and um, I was studying law and just didn't understand where that pathway was going. Yeah. So uh, I, I guess my um, career track or my progression hasn't been linear. It's been um, a, a bit kind of where are opportunities and uh, what what where can I you know play to my strengths. So the challenge in that was trying to explain that uh, it, it all kind of fit together and that whilst I didn't necessarily wake up 10 years ago, years ago and go, this is the role I'm going to do. Uh, I do want to do it right now and there's um, something that I can learn and there's also something that I can contribute. So it was more about trying to convince uh, my interviewers that I actually wanted to be here and I, uh, and I was going to be committed to the role and not be a flight risk. Working for a big four firm is uh, really ex exciting and because it's quite dynamic and so um, people often ask me what do I do and I genuinely can't answer that because uh, it changes based on the project I'm working on and what day of the week it is. So there are a lot of, a lot of times where I am um, in lots of meetings and working on projects and then there are other times where I'm pumping out reports and, and I guess what's great about that is the, the diversity of um, skills that you have access to build is um, you know, 
probably the benefit of working at a big four firm or a professional services firm, because it's not so specific. But what would be uh, the common thread in everything that I do is people engagement. So how do I take my stakeholders on the journey? How do I sell it to them? How do I challenge our business? Uh, and really how do we bring our strategy to life and so that is um, challenging uh, but you know put a challenge in front of me and I'll, I'll you know that's what I love I love chasing after that and bringing change so um, yeah changes every day but um, people would be at the core of what 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 I do so my, my greatest weakness is um, I'll bite off way more than I can chew. So my, my experience at law school is a great reflection yeah. of, yes, Sasha, you can work full time and study postgrad law. No one can do that. It's yeah. humanly not possible. And equally so, um, I think for me, I just love seizing opportunities. And so I'll often say yes. Uh, but then coupled with that, I don't like giving anything a half ass go. So I'll always give, give my everything. But as a result of that, by the end of it, I'm just broken yeah, because yeah. I've overcommitted yeah. to too much. So that would be my biggest weakness and just learning to decipher which opportunities are actually going to um, be of value to you, which one's going to take you a step further and not just say yes to everything because it, it sounds exciting. Yeah. So in your new role, does yeah. that mean you've got to say no to things? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and it's, so, uh, you know, coming, coming to a big four firm where there is opportunity all the time and really exciting things to work on, you, you absolutely want to say yes because on one hand it's about your development, it's about learning something new, but it's also about being part of it. I think in uh, professional services firms there's this really great energy that when a project's on, you just want to be part of it because everyone gets behind it. And so that's quite contagious, but then you just can't, like there's not enough time time of the day to actually be a part of everything yes. and say yes to everything. So sometimes it's just being able to, yeah, as I said, decipher which ones are actually important um, and, and learn to say no. For me, my greatest wrestle whilst I was at law school and going through grad applications and interview processes was do I tick boxes and say the right thing, go to a law firm and you know do the right thing, follow that pathway, or do I kind of you know, follow my heart and um, you know, what's actually important to me and what do I want to do and how do you say stay, stay true to yourself and that was a that was such a wrestle internally and trying to work out what to do and I would just say talk to people find a mentor or someone in a business that you really admire um, that you could learn from and get some advice I think um, trying to work through that conflict on your own doesn't really provide you anything different or, or much perspective but if you can speak to someone who is in a place where you want to be in five or ten years time their perspective can just be invaluable and if anything it's great to just have some someone challenge you um, on what or what you think might be. Um, so just get a different perspective, speak to other people, don't don't do it on your own. I think that's it. I think yeah. that was awesome. Awesome.